Let's uh, get the old uh, tuning condenser off the uh, chassis. And uh, this looks familiar too, from where I'm looking at it. Uh, Defiance. That rings a bell. I'm going to go back and look at my Remington little uh, TRF that I did a restore on a long, long time ago. I think it had the same uh, tuning condenser in it. Alright, you can see our uh, connection points here. You got uh, one lead here on the back side of the uh, tuning condenser if that's showing up here just running across the uh, the chassis itself and again it attaches itself here to the uh, first RF coil here and then the uh, second connection here being uh, closest to us comes from uh, underneath the chassis and uh, this other third connection point here just uh, goes back to the uh, grid cap I think on the 57 tube went in here all right let's uh, see what holds this thing in and get it uh, removed real quick before we do here you can see that other uh, lead that comes through it goes over to the tuning capacitor here going over to the uh, RF coil underneath here makes a connection point right here and back through the uh, chassis here and it looks like there's two fasteners that hold the uh, tuning condenser in here and back here and it uh, looks to be pretty good shape a few uh, whiskers there but uh, I'm going to run this thing through the ultrasonic uh, cleaner so uh, should clean up nice and I do want to go back and look at my other um, video on that West Coast Remington. I'm pretty sure this is the same um, tuning condenser that was used in it. If it's not that one, it's another one of the little TFR or excuse me TRFs that I uh, worked on at some point in time. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take advantage of this. I just want to clean up a little bit of the uh, chassis, see what it looks like. Got some rust right here, but uh, just see how well this thing cleans. Okay, one of my favorites uh, to use, of course, just some water at times and some soap is uh, one of your best friends, but I've got some of these wipes out here. Disinfectant wipes, and that's probably not a bad thing anyway. There's been any little critters up here running around at some point in time. So this looks uh, looks pretty good. It's amazing how well it uh, cleaned up underneath where the uh, tuning condenser was. And that's just uh, wiping only. So we'll do a little navel jelly right here. Uh, just for some spot rust removal. Maybe just a little bit in here. And I'll probably uh, take one of my abrasive pads. And uh, just scrub the top a bit. Or I may not. I may just leave it as is. We'll see if any of this gunk comes off in this area where the transformer resided. Uh, maybe a little. It's almost like a tar-like substance. Makes you wonder if the uh, old transformer at some point in time did go. Since we see all that goo there. What do you guys think? Not bad. Again, only enough I'll fool with all this uh, crap here that's underneath the uh, transformer or not try to scrub it off we'll see again I will go ahead and take time to get this rust off here and uh, put some rust inhibitor on the uh, chassis as well alright let's get the old uh, speaker fuel coil and output transformer here off the uh, while we're waiting on the uh, soldering iron to heat up, here's the uh, first connection point that we'll get rid of. 
you can see where it loops in. Here it comes right over the base of the tube itself and uh, resides here to this first uh, terminal strip uh, next to the uh, AC input. Let's see if I can uh, loosen up this solder joint and just pull this off. You can see sometimes how you can create a cold solder joint by doing what I just showed. I think that thing could just drop right out now. So that's one down. Alright, here's the uh, next one I'll attempt to uh, desolder. It's this lead right here, and you can see it coming through as well. And then uh, attaches itself back over here where the AC line attaches. So let me go ahead and get this uh, area right here cleaned up also. Okay, both uh, connection points. This one here that attaches to this uh, tab that I broke. It's the uh, on-off switch and uh, same here. So I'm going to just stick this one back through and leave it there for the now. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, tack this one back on just for a bit. Again, I had to clean this up anyway, then we'll uh, fix this uh, terminal strip here. May even use uh, part of another strip. I've done that also in the past. We'll get that uh, back where it needs to be. And while I'm in here, might as well go ahead and um, unsolder this uh, center mess right here and get that cleaned up as well. And I just mentioned getting the uh, on off here back in this area for now. Okay, that's good for now. Just tack that in place. We'll fix that up here in just a bit. Okay, let's get the uh, output transformer off. It's these two leads. Okay, everything uh, matches the uh, schematic. I was just making uh, double sure. So again, these two leads right here, your uh, output transformer, again, goes to the uh, plate here of the uh, 2A5 uh, power output tube and then uh, adjacent to that uh, pin number three. And uh, you can see that here on the uh, schematic here. Let me see if I can hold that up here. Here's uh, plate pin number two, 2A5. Again, this symbol right here, your uh, output transformer. And you can see the uh, pin number three this connection point here back to the other side Let's see if we can get that to uh, release here okay there we go all right let me see if I can reposition this and get down in there and do the same now for uh, number three a little tight down in there Put a little more solder here on the soldering iron to see if I can get this other solder to uh, actually melt. There we go. So we'll work it loose without uh, breaking the uh, tube socket. All right, let me get these pulled out. Okay, the uh, two remaining wires here that I want to break loose again will be to the uh, fuel coil itself, reads uh, 2500 ohms. Again, we've looked at that on the schematic, um, but that's located here, so you guys can see that. Okay, here's where this uh, lead comes through the chassis, and you can see we've got a, a nice loop in here. They left some extra wire uh, just coiled up in this area. And uh, we'll try to go back and do the same. And uh, just for ease, what I'm going to do, since I've got some extra here, if you follow this around, you can see it comes back up and goes right here. 
not there, but right here. That's the other wire I said it bleed was already cut from underneath, just laying against the uh, chassis. And I think that's where these other electrolytics had been uh, put in at one time. So uh, I'm going to just cut this uh, back in this area for now. That'll give me a reference point later to if my uh, memory fades uh, where this uh, goes. Again, field coil connection number one right here on this terminal. Okay, the uh, second connection point again is this loop wire here. You can see it's more of a black or maybe a green or so. And uh, you can see where it resides, another loop right here. And again, it goes to the other side of this uh, resistor here. And uh, back to this terminal strip here. So again, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just cut it back about a quarter of an inch or so. Then uh, pull it through. Okay, there you have it. Again, the uh, field coil being located here. And again, it's nothing more than just a choke for the uh, power supply and the uh, output transformer located here on top. So we'll do some DC measurements here, document that for the schematic, and I'll share those. Let me uh, go ahead and get this speaker uh, released here. It's kind of odd the way it's mounted at this uh, crazy angle. Two little screws here on the bottom side and a couple nuts. So uh, let me go ahead and back those out and uh, we'll do some testing again of the output transformer and the uh, field coil. Again, we know they're good, but uh, we'll just go ahead and document the DC resistance for uh, future folks doing restores on these particular little uh, TRF sets from the 30s. Okay, there we have it. Let me just set this thing over here for a moment. Definitely uh, getting the uh, chassis down here to bare bones. I would guess this to be the original uh, speaker and field coil as well. You can see that's showing up there, 2500 ohms, and again that matches the uh, schematic itself. I think I had one of these Magnavox speakers, maybe the same model number, and again one of my uh, TRFs from the uh, West Coast. Probably uh, very common. can't remember what this glob of uh, crap is here on the speaker. Let me look back at that in a bit. Let me uh, get the VOM here real quick. Let's, uh, let's test this just to see what the uh, readings are and then uh, place that on the schematic for uh, future folks. Okay, let's uh, start out here by testing the uh, output transformer. Again, this is the primary side. I would say five to eight hundred ohms, and uh, that's what we've got here: five hundred and forty-five ohms, or 0.544 k. And again, for those new to the hobby, I'm checking uh, right here at this location here and here. Again, the primary to the uh, output transformer, which is here. Secondary goes back into the speaker. I already know that it's working, but it's probably going to read a ohm or less. It'll be a step down transformer always. All right, let's uh, look at the fill coil again, which uh, resides over the uh, center pole piece, creates the uh, magnetic field for the uh, voice coil to oscillate up and down on. And again, the schematic called for uh, 2,500 ohms. I would guess this to be within uh, at least 20%. Alright, what did I do wrong here?
I had it hooked to the wrong lead. It kind of gave me a scare for a second. I didn't see anything. I knew that was probably not possible because we knew the radio worked. And there you have it. So uh, 2459 ohms or 2.459K. Let me uh, document these uh, results real quick. Again, I've showed the uh, fuel coil here numerous times. It's indicated here on the schematic. Again, just uh, documented for uh, other folks out there doing similar models, 2459 and 544 for the uh, DC resistance of the uh, output transformer. Okay, next, let's take a uh, look at what's going on here. I didn't do this, or I don't remember doing it, but i uh, got some red tape here. over this area. Maybe I did do it. I don't know. Maybe that was me adding some resistance here to see if I could improve the uh, performance of the set. Let's check the uh, DC resistance here of the, uh, of the uh, potentiometer here. This taper in uh, see what we've got. We know the on-off is working. We've already tested it. And if you look at the schematic here, again, these uh, old uh, TRF sets, the volume control is back up in here. Right here it is. It should be R1. You can see it resides in the uh, antenna circuit and it um, impacts the uh, probably the bias here to the uh, 58 tube. So uh, we'll play around with that as well. And R2, you can see R2 called out here as well. Uh, many times you'll find these uh, tapers uh, that were used in the, uh, this particular set, again, of being a TRF, is um, integrated where there's two segments. It looks like R2 is separate in this case, but uh, sometimes you'll see anywhere from two to 300 ohms of uh, resistance added in addition to the uh, the pod itself here R1 but you can see it going back over here and I uh, tying into the uh, cathode so um, it's definitely going to impact the uh, bias here of the uh, 58 tube so R1 um, 10 meg but I think that's really just 10 ohm mega and uh, this is going to be 10,000 ohms I believe. Let's uh, check it out and see what's in here today. Let's give this a check and see what we've got. Okay, again I'm reading across the entire uh, potentiometer here. I'll show that or try to show it. Let me just go down here to this lead and let's see not block my uh, meter. So I don't know if I got a nasty glare there that's showing up or not guys, but uh, 7.21K uh, so uh, 7200 ohms. So that's probably again why I added the additional resistors. Let's just see what we've got here. And you can see I just tacked in a couple there. And I think I do remember doing that now, but it's hard to say. 8,500 roughly ohms. And if I can, uh, this is probably not the original then, I would guess, but um, who knows, back in those days. Like Larry and other folks have stated, uh, many times they used what they had on hand. So uh, even though the schematic calls for uh, a 10,000 ohm potentiometer, uh, this may have been available. I think we can make it work with this. Again, it's just attenuating the uh, RF signal. You can see the way this works. This is your RF lead itself from your uh, antenna. I'll show it here on the schematic is uh, coming down through this area right into uh, one side of the uh, audio taper here.
anyway, kind of a crude design, and I think that's why Superhertz uh, replaced this. Performance again won't be great. Selectivity will be um, problematic. And again, there's no automatic volume control. But uh, pretty cool sets, really, for the period. Okay, one other thing, too, for uh, folks new in the hobby. Uh, you may see this often. But uh, you see, again, the uh, audio potentiometer, or tapers, I call them. Um, again, if you look at it here on the uh, schematic, uh, you'll see it called out. So uh, here's your input signal here to the uh, left of R1. Your output is your uh, wiper going back this direction toward the uh, tuning condenser that's indicated here. And you can see it feeds um, the uh, 58 RF tube for amplification. Um, R2 is most likely missing, and that may be why I tacked on those additional resistors to get the um, level or the uh, potentiometer value from 7.2 up to 8.5 to more closely match the uh, 10K that uh, should be there. But um, I think this is the, uh, the ground side here of the uh, pod as well. You can see it attaching itself to the uh, cathode of the uh, tube. But uh, one thing that you'll notice if you look at this, there's no connection to the center point. So in this case, uh, the way this is wired, if I'm looking at it uh, correctly, um, this is actually uh, grounded to the chassis in the uh, middle. And you'll see that uh, called out um, here on the schematic. So if you follow this along and it comes all the way down and you'll see a chassis ground so that center wiper uh, position is uh, tied into the chassis ground. So uh, just be mindful of that because again you don't see a physical connection but if you take your uh, meter here and uh, check between the uh, chassis ground and the center pot You can hear we have uh, continuity between those. All right, let me go ahead and document this uh, coil here. Uh, one of the RF coils, or probably some people refer to them as the antenna coil, since this is where the uh, antenna connects itself to. You can see through this wire um, antenna here, through the pot, back to here. So that's just one of the uh, two RF coils in this uh, particular radio. So you can see here, the only thing I need to do to document or confirm that the uh, primary winding here in this uh, first RF coil is good, um, I'll come off the uh, potentiometer again, the volume control, where the uh, antenna lead attaches itself. And then uh, just go back to chassis ground. And uh, it should look for a real low uh, DC resistance reading. So I've got the lead hooked up here to the uh, top of the uh, potentiometer. Again, you can see it attaching itself to the RF coil. And there's the antenna lead. And uh, let's just go over to the chassis itself and see what we get. And you can see I'm reading 1.3, 1 1.4 ohms. I'll call it 1.35 ohms for the documentation. And I'll just place it there. Again, representing this segment of the coil. Alright, let's uh, check this uh, secondary and see what we have at this location. Okay, you can see I got the leads hooked up here, and I'm just uh, again tracing out the uh, secondary coil. And again, I'm going to be coming off of uh, pin number three here off of the uh, 58 tube and just uh, going back to ground. And uh, looks like I'm reading right at 60 ohms, so I'll document uh, 59.9 or 60. I think I'll just go with 60 ohms for the uh, secondary. Okay, while we're on the uh, RF coils, let's go ahead and do the second coil here and uh, just see what results we have for it. Um, it again, it's the uh, second coil and it resides between the RF tube here. You can see the uh, 58, that's tied to the plate for the primary. And then uh, this runs into the uh, 57 tube, which acts as the uh, detector. 
Let's go ahead and pick those uh, connection points here and measure the uh, DC resistance here of the primary coil. Again, the uh, Type 58 tube, we know it resides here. And again, the uh, plate's going to be pin number 2. So again, pin 1, pin 2. So we'll tie in right here. And you can see that red lead running across and that ties in here to the uh, RF coil because there's B plus on that. And if you look at the other side of the coil, uh, you'll see that it comes down. And a good connection point for me to use will be to follow it all the way down where it ties in to get this on where you guys can see it. I'm sorry. We'll start all over here. All right, so let's look at the uh, tie-in points one more time where I want to make the DC measurement uh, results. And you can see here they got a voltage called out of 190 or so. That would be a good reference when we uh, fire this thing back up. But the uh, Type 58 tube, again the RF amp, will come off of uh, pin number 2, which is the plate. And the other connection point here, you can see I'm just coming down and going across. And I'm going to come all the way down and we'll tie it into uh, filament number uh, 1 or number 4, depending on how it's wired here at the uh, bottom. So if we look at that, again, here's the uh, connection point, pin number 1, pin number 2. This is the plate for uh, the Type 58 tube. This was the uh, rectifier tube that we were working uh, with earlier. Again, uh, pins number one. And that's the way I have it marked on my schematic. And I'm going to just tie in right here. So we'll put one lead here, one lead here. And that should give us the uh, DC resistance for the uh, primary on the uh, next RF coil. And let's see if that's showing up there. Hope you guys can see that. Get it out of the glare. 9.2 uh, ohms. Let me uh, document that and we'll go over to the uh, secondary side. Moving along here again to that uh, second RF coil. Again, we measured the uh, input primary at 9.2. Now let's read the uh, secondary. And what I want to do again, um, and folks, for uh, follow me along out there too, when I'm saying G3, that means um, it's a grid and it's attached to pin 3. It may not necessarily be listed as grid number 3 on the uh, tube manual. So keep that in mind. This was just for my documentation that uh, G4 is pin number 4, but it's a grid. And uh, I just did it that way just so I could follow along very easily. But um, again, you may see it called uh, grid 2, you know, is tied to pin number 3. So uh, keep that in mind if you're following me along. Um, anyway, to check this um, secondary here, you can see what happens. The uh, secondary side of the coil goes to the uh, chassis ground, so that will be one connection that's simple enough. And the other side uh, comes over here to the Type 57 tube again, which I think is the uh, detector tube, and it's going to tie into uh, pin number three. Now the uh, 57 tube resides right here, right behind the uh, tuning condenser when it's in the circuit. So let's flip this over uh, real quick and uh, just make that measurement. Again, uh, this is pin. It's probably hard to see, but uh, you got the two fat pins again. So this would be the furthest left. So pin number one, two, and three. So let's attach here and I've got a uh, resistor that comes off of that. We'll attach there and then we'll just go to the chassis ground and you can see we're reading uh, 60 ohms of DC resistance and uh, that's almost identical to what we read off of the uh, first RF coil. So let me get that documented as well. Uh, 60 ohms. All right, very good. We're moving uh, right along here. Let's uh, see what we want to do next here. So, uh, folks, I've got my uh, cheap little LCR meter plugged in, and hopefully you guys can see this on camera. Again, I've got the uh, tuning condenser right now uh, meshed all the way closed. And, uh, of course, when that occurs, 
you'll have uh, the most capacitance and uh, you can see that's what we've got and in this case it's around 251 picofarads and again if I open this thing wide open um, you would have less capacitance and you can see that being the case at 13.86 so the coils that we were just looking at again create an LC circuit and allow the inductor and capacitor to resonate uh, in the broadcast band frequency. Okay, I'm about uh, finished up for today. I've got some other chores that uh, require some attention, so uh, just wrapping up here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to uh, just clean up the uh, chassis. So, um, like many others, I've used uh, steel wool on the uh, chassis. Don't like to. The uh, fibers are really just create nightmares. There's an equivalent um, 3M Scotch-Brite 7448 and it's a brace of uh, gray pad and uh, you'll find them to do a uh, really really good job and I actually use these to uh, remove lacquer from uh, radio cabinets as well and you can see here we get very similar uh, results to uh, using steel wool but you don't get those metal fibers down in your uh, electronic parts and uh, create some issues um, the other thing I'll probably do is use a little navel jelly and uh, that's what I typically do I'll put some on the chassis let it sit for a bit then I'll just rub it in with this so um, I may show a little bit of that when I get down to this area here where will uh, lift the uh, coil out of the way and uh, just maybe undo that pot and uh, swing it off to the side and uh, we'll do the same in this area but it really won't take uh, I don't think too much of an effort here to uh, you know clean up this uh, chassis uh, one other thing too you guys probably noticed you got this switch here on the back and uh, it looks like someone after the fact put a tone control on I don't see it in the schematic looking at the audio section here for the 2A5 so uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it or not because it's got a lot of those ceramic uh, caps in there so I'll probably just pull it out uh, just to clean up the uh, chassis then I'll put a hole plug or something in the back if I've got one the correct size or uh, just leave it open or stick a grommet back there or something hey folks thanks for joining me we'll get back to uh, cleaning this thing and uh, start doing some more cleanup on the power transformer the speaker basket and the uh, tuning condenser appreciate you guys following along